Good morning. Good morning to you. Happy Friday. G'day here on Instagram. Hi to you on Facebook. Tanja here. I am a leadership and mindset specialist. I typically work with real estate leaders and teams that want to grow themselves and their people in the least amount of time. Good morning, Kate Ashton. Great to have you here and great to have Hugo here. Welcome to Rapid Fire Friday. How are you? Just type in one word, one word. Let me know how you authentically are right now. G'day, Joe. Great to have you here as well. Facebook tends to take a little while to load. So those of you on Facebook, do me a flavor, type in one word to describe how you're feeling right now. How am I feeling? I feel really present. I feel really here with you. I've had a great sleep. I'm in week four of my eight-week training program and I'm here to give you some of the top insights and themes that have come out of my one-on-one -on -one coaching with clients this week. Uh, G'day Simon, great to have you here. You're happy, I'm happy, you're happy. Hey Tina, great to have you here too. Good morning Greg, as always. Look at your sunshine face. Live, happy Friday, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so Rapid Fire Friday, you know, what? here's what I know, as a, as a peak performance, I can't speak, but I coach, as a peak performance coach, uh, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I speak at events and I do training, I know not everyone's in a position to have the resources right now to invest in a one-on-one -on -one coach, but as I've said before, I don't want that to be the reason why you can't get some tips that you can apply in your business and, and give yourself access to growth, whether it's growth mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually, physically, financially, in your leadership and your communication. This is what I do. And every Friday, I just reflect on some of the key one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions I've done. And uh, I take out the key themes that I think is going to be relevant to a wider audience. And I just share them. And I just share some rapid fire tips. So that's what we're going to do. Hey, Lloyd, good morning. Thanks for your message this week. I've got it in my diary to call you today as I'm driving my friend. So one word to describe how you are today balanced and ready and uh, a good week, Tanj. Good to hear. Speaking of a good week, I also want to say uh, thank you to everyone that has emailed, DM'd or messaged me on social media to say thank you for this content. Uh, it, I do it all for you. Hopefully it gives you access to grow. Jackie Ann, Stephen Bailey, good morning. Look, you just guys just joined straight away. How are things down in Radelaide? How are you? Keeping warm? And uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to those of you who take the time to write in what this content provides for you, how you've actioned it and the difference that it makes because that just is gold. It's just really great for me to know. All right, let's begin. So one client that I had this week, uh, you know, here is the power of perspective and here is how I know many of us have a shitty perspective about a situation in our life and we are beating ourselves up unnecessarily and how if you just flip your perspective around, it'll give you a whole different experience of yourself, others and the world. And, and so here's the scenario. Really briefly, one client that I coached this week bought into a business two uh, years ago, a uh, property management business, and um, you know, with a business partner, they're going to set the world on fire. They're going to make things really happen. G'day, Jackie. She's going awesome. Massive results and success. Of course there is. Good morning, Fiona. Great to have you here. Congratulations, Jackie and Stephen and the Bailey team, Bailey's team. Happy for you. So, you know, joined a business owner. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Sarah. Great to have you here. Hey, Tay. Great to have you here too. And they're going to set the world on fire. And then within two months, the original business owner leaves, right? Leaves. So this new business owner has invested a significant amount of money, 400000 into the business and going to set the world on fire, both going to do different things. And then the original business owner leaves. Okay. So this was not on the brochure. However, for the last 18 months, they've been in this business for two years, and I say this with absolute love and respect because we flipped their perspective this week and now they have a whole new access to happiness because what's been happening is they have been like the, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West in, was it a Oz? Like, I'm melting, I'm melting, just sinking in the sediment of the suffering of what 
wasn't rather than going okay it's all perspective your definition is decisive so if for the last 18 months this business owner has been struggling has been suffering has been wishing the business partner didn't leave has been stressed about what to do and then really just surviving and losing sight of why they um, joined the business in the first place and I asked one simple question I asked um, good morning to you too Fiona I asked how much is the business worth now? Like, you know, 18 months later, how much is it worth? And they said, oh, it's now worth 600. So, so I said, so you bought in at 400 and now it's worth 600. So you're telling me in 18 months you have increased your personal wealth by 200,000. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah. I said, have you ever stopped to think about that? Have you ever stopped to smell the roses of what is rather than what isn't? And they were just like, no. And we just completely flipped it. And I can't tell you how many types of these conversations I have every week. I know we are hardwired. I'm hardwired to get the whip and whip myself of things that I could have, should have done better, been better. Like, honestly, it doesn't serve us. Um, hey, who is he? Samuel, great to have you here. Brendan, good morning, my friend. G'day Vicky, g'day Paula, g'day Faye, g'day Melissa Quinn, hey Sharpie, good morning, great to have you here, Holly, do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brooklyn, good morning, my love. Too many of us are spending too much time cracking the whip, we have to wave the wand and changing your perspective of something is critical. So here's my invitation, here's what I want you to do. If you're noticing that you're thinking or reflecting about the past and what hasn't happened or didn't work or you know the weight you have or the money you don't have or the relationship that ended or whatever it is, I want you to stop asking why me and getting into a victim consciousness because that will give you no power Oh, Rumi, is that Rumi? <laughs> Good morning, Rumi. It'll give you no power. It'll fact, it'll erode your power and it'll bleed your potential. I want you to ask, what's the lesson? I've said this before, but you know, this is a great lesson for us all. What's the lesson? What is this here to teach me? What have I learned? And try to focus on the positive. Try to have some faith that if you join a business and within two months the business owner is leaving, rather than go, oh, everything's turning to crap, trust the process and have a positive distinction around it because definition is decisive. And here's what I know about us human beings. We automatically paint our world with the negativity brush. We automatically look for what's wrong rather than trust that there is magic on the other side of this change. Does this make sense to you? If this is making sense, please let me know. This makes sense. I invite you to have a look at any area of your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationship, leadership, finance, business, growth, purpose, whatever it is, contribution, impact. What story are you telling yourself and how can you look at it from a different perspective and start focusing on the positive and celebrate the lessons and blessings that this um, has given you, this experience has given you? Does that make sense? Hi, Rumi. How are you, my friend? Great to have you here. Lael Stone, good morning, my love. If it makes sense, please type in, this makes sense. And if this is something, that is, this is a message you want someone that you love and care about to get for themselves, please tag them in this as well. <clears throat> hey, Jay, um, Jay, great to have you here as well all right another key theme this week particularly with principles but I know this is happening everywhere by the way if you're watching this live do me a flavor type in live if you're watching the record type in the record so I just know when this content is getting to you that would be super helpful to me too many of us say I don't have time like do you hear yourself say I don't have time I don't have time I don't have time g'day Katrina great to have you here as well my love <clears throat> here's what I know for sure we think we don't have time, but we are wasting our time. Uh, thanks, Vicky. Wasting our time doing stuff that really doesn't matter. And in some cases, wasting um, not only our time, but our money. And I'll give you an example of this. Yesterday, I did a coaching session for five directors of a really top performing um, agency. They're forecast, you know, they're going to make about five million this financial year. And they're really having the experience of what most business owners in real estate are having, navigating, working in the business and on the business. Now, whether you're a leader watching this or whether you're a sales agent or a BDM, a PM, or not even in real estate, I just invite you to look for yourself. Where are you telling yourself you don't have time and where are you wasting time? 
I noticed in my social media usage, I was 27% down in my usage last week, which is good because I'm, I'm wasting less time, you know, swiping left, right, scrolling, whatever, all that is. <clears throat> yes, makes, um, makes sense. Great. Oh, thanks. You've tagged Byron. Hey, Byron, jump on the conversation. So five directors in a coaching session yesterday all saying they really are struggling to have time to grow the business because most of them are also on the tools. Yet, here's what I learn. Three directors, sometimes four directors, are attending a meeting for a particular category of the business, whether it's admin and finance or property management. So we have four expensive resources in the business that are all attending the meeting because they think they should. And what was really missing in their business and what we're working on is a clear organizational flow chart. And whether you're a leader or not, you can have this in your own business. Even as a startup, you know, I've, I've got a, a org chart. My name is in most of the boxes, but I've also got outsourced resources and a, a new um, operations um, coordinator and executive assistant starting. So, you know, you can still have your names in the boxes, but you've got to have clear categories in your business. So they didn't have a clear organizational flow chart. They didn't have clear accountability across the key departments of the business being CEO, head of sales, head of property management, head of commercial, if you have that in your business, head of marketing and social media, head of people, culture and client experience, and head of admin, finance and legals, right, and accounts. You have to have a champion, a head, um, a, a director of that content in your business. Otherwise, things fall through the cracks. Good morning, Rachel and uh, G'day, Aisha. Great to have you here as well. Does that make sense? Uh, Fiona, um, live and make sense. I'm great. I'm, I'm great. I'm great and I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks for saying. So first of all, you've got to design an organizational flowchart. Even if you're a solo operator, there are those categories in your business. I need you to start thinking like a CEO, even if your name's in all the boxes, so you can make sure you're thinking about, oh, yeah, I've actually got to do stuff in those areas. Okay, so that's A. B, apportion someone if you have a team. So these, these guys have a team and they have five directors. They just didn't have directors looking after key things. And then they had four directors sitting in on one meeting. And I just said, you guys are the most expensive resource in the business. You're bringing in the most revenue and you cost the most revenue. Why would you have four of you sit in one meeting? And the reason was they thought they should. They thought they pe their people actually want all of them there. And I promise you, they don't. Your people don't want every single director in every meeting. That's a waste of human power, human resources. What your people do want is they want clarity on who's who in the Zoom. They want clarity on their own purpose contracts and action performance indicators. They want clarity on their um, personal development plan. They want clarity around their ideal week and they want clarity to know that you are there to support them when things aren't clear, where things go wrong and they know who to turn to. Uh, real estate I'm learning really lacks a lot of kind of corporate thinking or organizational development. Leadership particularly is a massive gap, which is why I specialize in leadership and mindset. So my invitation to you, whether you're a leader or not, organizational flowchart for yourself in your business even if you're an agent <clears throat> you're the CEO of your own business chief energy officer you are the director of your own sales forget PM if you're not in property management forget commercial if you're not in commercial but you are the director of marketing and social media you are the director of um, you know um, people and client experience. You are the director of accounts, finances and legal and don't be afraid to invest in yourself. You know, like sometimes we're too scared to spend money to make money uh, because we are afraid that we won't go and make the extra money to invest in what we're spending. But how much is it costing us? Like I've, I'm just getting about to get a bookkeeper. Can you believe for the first time in four and a half years I'm getting a bookkeeper? I do not have time to reconcile accounts. I typically have anywhere between twenty to $30,000 owing to me at any period of time. I just want to coach and change lives. I don't want to look back at the past and it's not a good use of my time and it's not my skill set so now it's time to invest make sense so where are you bottlenecking your progress and if you don't know what an organizational flowchart is google it 
Google organizational flowchart and design one for yourself and it'll help you get strategic in your thinking and it'll help you plan your in the business and on the business time. <clears throat> Lael is writing here, great learnings and great advice always. Um, delegation has been a game changer for me. I don't have to um, to touch anything. Oh God, we love that, especially a broom <laughs> or a tea towel. Good on you, Lael. Oh, you are on fire, girl, doing amazing things. And, um, Lael's actually built a school and now is looking for teachers. So if you know a really great teacher, Lael, where's the location of this school? Hey, Patty, great to have you here. Okay, so we've talked about um, beating yourself up with a shitty perspective and how if you flip that perspective you might find the blessings that are there for you rather than cra cracking the whip wave the wand uh we've talked about how wasting time uh you know you've got to value your time and uh, don't think that you should be everywhere have clarity around who's who in the zoo empower them to be there to support your team and make decisions and that is just a really purposeful thing to do <clears throat> this one is this this next one is the desire for perfection is really just creates unbelievable overwhelm and it is a mask for a lack of faith and trust in ourselves. At a conversation with the principal today, one of my clients, and you know he's been putting off things to do because here's what he occurs in his mind: if if what he is about to do is not best practice, is not world class, is not schmick schlick. He doesn't want to do it. So his desire for perfectionism just gets in the way of progress. Now, one example here was he has a, a personal assistant and an office manager who is floundering. And I've said, do they have a clear position description? No. I said, write one. He goes, I don't know how to write one. I said, just dump all the things that you need them to do on a piece of paper. I even went and sourced a detailed position description for him and gave it to him and said, here is an example, work through this. Kylie Charlton, good morning. Lloyd Hillard, good morning. Lloyd, you've migrated from Insta to Facebook. Okay, maybe you're on both, I don't know. Surround sound. Hello to all of you, thanks for tuning in. And I said, if your people don't have clarity, they're wasting time and you're not getting maximum return on investment. But you know, it's not, it's not his flavor to, to write a purpose contract or position description. So I went and got one, a very detailed one. I sent it to him and said, here you go, edit this. He still didn't do it, still putting it off. And I'm like, mate, what's getting in the way? And that's where he revealed, you know, if it's not elite, if it's not perfect, if it's not benchmark quality, if it's not schmick, slick, you know, if it's not going to be on the front cover of Entrepreneur Magazine or the Financial Review as the best position description, he doesn't want to do it. And I'm like, you know what? This is, excuse my French, a bullshit smoke screen that's just you procrastinating and you're not being responsible for it. Just that's what I'm saying, right? So I said, please. I'm not going to, and he goes, can I get the guy to write his own? I said, yeah, you could do that, but I want you to actually have a breakthrough in doing, having a breakthrough in perfectionism and doing something yourself. So he realized, by the way, I have a belief that how you do one thing is how you do everything. He realized that that perfectionism is everywhere and how it absolutely gets in the way of him making decisions. And he's been thinking about doing things for a long time, as have a number of my clients. Yesterday, I coached another two principals. They've been thinking about bringing in an agent in one of their offices to free up one of the directors so they can be the full-time operations officer. And I'm just like, you know what? This is your homework. You're actually going to do it. You're going to find an agent in the next two weeks and let's be done with this and move on. Our lack of decision making and our seeking perfection is a handbrake to our progress. And you know where it comes from? It comes from a, a lack of faith in our ability and a, a lack of trust in our ability and a lack of faith in the universe and that results are going to be produced. The most successful people on the planet, you would have heard this in all the YouTube motivational videos. They aren't afraid to fail. They aren't afraid to try. They assess everything, take an action, review the risks and go for it and they progress and when they go, oh well that didn't work, they adjust and they adjust and they adjust quickly. So my invitation to you today is where are you procrastinating? Where are you thinking about doing something and not doing it? Where are you stopping yourself from making a decision to progress and you're getting in your own head and getting in your own way? Does this make sense? 
please let me know if this makes sense. And I'd love you to type in, if you're not driving, what are you getting for yourself this morning? What are you hearing for, for yourself that you could apply, you could do differently, and what difference would that make? Please share because it's really great feedback for me to know what does this mean to you. Okay, great. And I think the other thing I want to share here is I had another conversation with a performing agent who uh, is not scared but has a little bit of a wobble when it comes to having price adjustment conversations. I'm a really, really, really big fan of managing expectations up front. And here's my counsel on this. When you land a listing, if you're in real estate and you're watching this, when you land a listing, establish kind of the rules of the game, the agreements, the engagement up front, meaning plan A, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, is that we're going to sell your house for the highest value in the least amount of time with a great campaign. We're going to position your house, you know, as best as we can. We know where it needs to go. We know the demographic we're going to market to. We're going to do traditional marketing. We're going to invest in social media marketing, boosting on Facebook. We're going to do all of that. And we're going to do everything in our power to get the best result for you. That's plan A. And plan B is the market will tell us Otherwise, the market will tell us something different. And if, we hope we don't get there, but if we get there, what that will look like is we will sit down and have a really straight conversation around what the market feedback is and what adjustments we need to make to ensure the house doesn't sit on, you know, uh, for sale too long because then interest really dies down and the perception of the home uh, dissipates somewhat. Patty saying, sure does. I procrastinate all the time. Patty, I'd love you to write here on this page. What is one thing? What is an action that you're going to take today, honey? Like today. Can you, can you see a belief you're creating here? Sure does. I procrastinate all the time. Well, guess what? Your subconscious mind is not going to kickstart the decision-making cogs because your belief that you have to be right about is you procrastinate all the time. So guess what? That's the truth. Patty, let's have a breakthrough, right? Let's act, thanks for being a lighthouse too, because there's probably other people on this call that procrastinate all the time too. Let's let's have a breakthrough. What can you action today that you've been thinking about for ages? Type it in. What action can you do today that you've been thinking about for ages? So where was I? I was talking about, um, okay, price adjustments. Have the conversations up front and even let them know, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to come together and, and talk about what that next phase is and establish. So, so when, and if it gets to that point, fast forward two, three, four, five, six weeks, whatever it is, you can say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, we attempted plan A to the best of our ability. Do you feel that we did everything to get you the best result? They're going to say yes because you, you would have, right? If you have integrity and you were your word, you would have for sure. And now we're here at plan B. Now we said this could happen based on market activity and we know what the steps are now because we talked about it six weeks ago. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And here's the process now. So there's no surprises because real estate agents are still the third least trusted profession in the country. You already have a barrier to entry when you're trying to get business from people. Then from the moment, um, you know, vendors sign an authority to when the house is sold, their confidence in their agent of choice drops by 47%. So you've got to give them specific touch points where you keep that relationship strong and that relationship sticky and that relationship clear and productive and engaged. Otherwise, they're going to look for evidence to blame you why they didn't get the result. And you don't want to do that. So establish the rules of the game up front. Be transparent with them across the whole point of the process. And finally, when it comes to having price adjustment conversations, get yourself out of the conversation. Remove concern that you're not good enough. Remove concern that you didn't do a good job, especially if you did. If you didn't do a good job, then get concerned and tweak it and do a better job next time is make sure you're covering all bases, including social media, but remove concern. Because if you're concerned and you're taking it personally, you think you did a bad job and then you try to have a price adjustment conversation, it's gonna impact your confidence. It's gonna impact the level of, um, a connection that you have with your client because they'll just sense something is off. They won't know what it is, but it just doesn't feel as solid. Does that make sense?
So we've talked today about stop beating yourself up about with shitty perspectives because it's going to erode your mojo. Start looking at the lesson or the blessing. Put the whip down and start waving the wand and be your own cheerleader because too many of us are too hard on ourselves. Start valuing your time. Look at where you're wasting your time and where you think you should be spending your time and now start deciding where must you spend your time to get maximum health, maximum mental clarity, maximum emotional stability, maximum spiritual fulfillment, maximum productivity, performance and financial gain. Make sense? I know you know where you're wasting your time. You don't need me to tell you that. I know where I was and still am. Our desire perfect perfect our desire for perfection is simply a mask and a smoke screen that we don't have faith in ourselves and trust in our abilities and we're too scared about what other people think. I talked about that last week and it's procrastination. It's bullshit. Stop it. Stop thinking about the decisions you need to make and start making them and adjust along the way. Progress beats perfection every day and have confident in, confidence in yourself when having price adjustment conversations. Let people know the lay of the land up front and if and when it comes to that, get yourself out of the way and just deal with the facts rather than your wobbly feelings that you're not good enough and you could have done a better job, especially if you've done a great job along the way. So. Hope you find that useful. I hope you got something for yourself. Please let me know. Type in here, what was the thing that made real sense to you today? What was the thing that you needed to hear today? And as always, I just do this uh, these sessions for free just for the love because my purpose is to give you access to be happy and deeply fulfilled in all areas of your life. If you found it valuable, the best thing you could do for me would be to tag someone or even better, share this on your page and say, hey, check this out. There might be something there for you. Oh, my God, I've missed a whole lot of messages here. I'm so sorry, peeps. Um, Kate, I will continue my momentum for energy from two weeks to four weeks so that I stay pumped. Yeah, great. That was that was a good lesson we discovered yesterday, Kate. Hey, C Clip, that's nice to have you here. Okay, Wood Wood Fire Woodline Primary School um, series, Geelong. That's the school. If you know a teacher that's looking for work around Geelong, please um, contact on um, social media, Laylstone, or reach out to me because. Um, uh, I can connect you to, to Lael and she can tell you more information. Nice work, Lael. Good on you for changing the lives of kids. Sorry my hand's in this video, but the sun is shining on my screen. Yes, nice job, um, Kate. I love that you're sharing that. Oh, God, and now I've turned the screen around. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's high, high tech here at uh, TMJ Coaching. G'day, Ben. Great to have you here. So we're going to wrap up. Patty says, um, affirm my intentions for the day. Only do dollar productive activities. Nice. Stephen says, awesome info. Patty, I know that there is something else in you that's a decision you need to make. I just feel it in my waters. So yes, set your intentions, honey. Absolutely go for it. Do only dollar productive stuff. Yes. But I feel in my waters there's one decision, one action, one big thing that you been procrastinating on today's the day I don't know what it is but I know it's there uh, so just just putting it out there okay that's a wrap for rapid fire Friday I'll be back for mindset mastery Monday 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this is where it's all for you if you have any questions about how to elevate your physical mental emotional spiritual business financial confidence leadership communication state write to me and I'll answer any question Pardon me, that you have. I love you. Thank you for spending your time with me. I wish you an amazing day. Expect miracles today. Like, really expect miracles. And finally, as always, in the words of the late, great Maya Angelou, please remember, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Do something today to make yourself and others feel great. Have a beautiful weekend. Happy show day for tomorrow. Thanks for spending your valuable time with me. I love you. Be well. Ciao.